Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos on chemistry and biochemistry, overviewing different types of chemical reactions. The picture on this slide, as well as the information on the next few slides, will show that there are many ways that atoms can combine and many different classifications of chemical reactions. There are a few conventions that must be followed when writing or trying to interpret a chemical reaction. The things that go into a chemical reaction, called the reactants, are located on the left side of the equation. What comes out of the chemical reaction, or the products, are located on the right side of the equation. The reactants and products are separated by an arrow. Some chemical reactions produce heat while others require it. Some chemical reactions occur by themselves while other chemical reactions need energy. There are numerous ways that atoms can be rearranged in chemical reactions. The chemical reaction on the bottom of this slide will be discussed later in the year. It's the chemical reaction that occurs in photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide, water, and energy from the sun's light are used to produce sugar and oxygen. There are lots of different types of chemical reactions, and we'll go over some of the main classifications on the next few slides. Sometimes in chemical reactions, large molecules are broken down into smaller pieces. The picture to the right shows what happens during this type of event, referred to as a decomposition reaction. The reactant, or starting material in this picture, is the four purple circle-sized chunk. And the products of this chemical reaction are two smaller molecules, one three purple circle-sized chunk and another one purple-sized circle. When food decomposes, bacteria break it down and they eat it. Thinking of the word decomposition in this context might help you remember what happens in a type of chemical reaction. Instead of breaking apart large molecules, as in a decomposition reaction, small molecules are joined together in what is called a synthesis reaction. In the picture to the right, a three purple circle molecule and a one purple circle molecule both join together to form one large four circle molecule. The word synthesis means to bring together in many other contexts, such as math. Recalling this might help you too. In another type of chemical reaction, called a replacement reaction, atoms swap places with one another. In the example graphic found on this slide, this type of reaction is clearer than a real example with atoms might be. In this image, each couple would represent a compound, and each individual could represent an atom. The couples in this example swap individuals, just like you'd see in a replacement reaction. On the last three slides, it was described how atoms can be rearranged in chemical reactions. On these next two slides, what we'll do is describe what happens in terms of energy during chemical reactions. Throughout this year in science, you will hear prefixes exo, ecto, and exer. And what all those terms mean, what all those prefixes mean, is to give off. In exergonic reactions, energy that is stored in bonds is given off. These re reactions are spontaneous, meaning that no outside energy is needed for them to occur. They happen naturally, without any outside help. The image to the right shows an exergonic reaction. What this image so shows is that the free energy is greater in the reactants on the left side of the graphic than on the products on the right side of the graphic. The last classification of reaction that we're going to be discussing is called an endergonic reaction. In scientific context, the prefixes endo and ender mean to take in. These type of chemical reactions are non-spontaneous. They require some outside energy source in order to occur. An example of an endergonic reaction would be a reaction that we looked at earlier, the process of photosynthesis, where light energy is needed to drive or make a chemical reaction happen. There is a separate video on Gibbs free energy, which has to do with endergonic and exergonic reactions, enthalpy and entropy that describe how these type of reactions occur in more detail, but it's beyond the scope of this video. That is the end of this video summarizing chemical reactions. If you're interested in learning about any specific chemistry or biochemistry concepts or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.